Today, we're going to go back, all the way back to Minecraft 1.0, in search of the loneliest and most forgotten, sometimes extremely creepy Minecraft servers. We'll start with version 1.0, and work our way up to ultimately version 1.20. Let's begin. Starting off with 1.0, I could only find one server. It was called Nostalgia 1.0. Though the server was offline, I made a quick search of it, and I managed to find a post from the site Minecraft Forum. Uh, apparently, it was supposed to be an evolution anarchy server starting on version 1.0 that would be upgrading through the versions over time. A Discord was also linked, but upon clicking on it, I found the link to be expired. Now, undeterred, I managed to find the creator of the server's Discord tag and ended up messaging him. Though sadly, it turned out that my messages wouldn't be delivered because the user only allowed direct messages from friends. With all I could do done, I migrated to version 1.1. And once again, I could only find one server called Vanguard Minecraft. And once more, I found the server to be offline. Further research showed that the server had been updated to version 1.8.9. And even after going to the appropriate version, I still sadly couldn't seem to access it. Being unable to find information on the server, I continued on. But I continue to run into these reoccurring issues of servers being offline, outdated, or inaccessible. 1.2.1 Legacy Realms, Connection Lost, End of Stream. 1.2.2 Play.Strength-Network, Server, Offline. 1.2.5 Survival Ticket 404, Failed to Connect to the Server, Connection Refused, Connect. With these errors reoccurring and being unable to contact the server creators, I realized it was time to jump to the first server I was actually able to join. 1.5.2 beta-chy was the first server I managed to join. Upon logging in, I was greeted with the sight of what almost resembled a 2b2t obsidian portal trap. I wasn't able to look around, and it seemed as though a password was needed to play, as the message please register with forward slash register password confirm password continued to pop up in my chat bar. Looking for a way to get whitelisted, I found a discord server invite that ultimately had expired. But through further research, I eventually found one that worked via the site beta-chy home. After asking around in a new discord in the general chat, I received a response from a user known as El Shike Tito on how to join. Huge thank you to them for lending their time on a very helpful explanation. So upon joining and actually walking around, this is what we would be exposed to, which was a lot like, like I said, the 2b2t anarchy server. As you can see, there's lots of stuff on the ground. And an interesting thing is that there's actually another player, so it's not as abandoned as it used to be. And apparently upon dying, uh, after being exploded by a keeper, you would be sent up to this cobblestone lava water pyramid that you typically see in anarchy servers, nothing too crazy about this. Although the size was pretty noteworthy and mentionable considering you couldn't sprint in this version, which was something I'd kind of forgotten. Eventually, I decided to walk down this path because I thought it might get me out of this anarchy server, and I fell down too, just while talking. But I had a nice chat with my friend, uh, Dreamer underscore S, who apparently was joining the same reason I was, exploring just the old servers and because of the nostalgia feel of playing on a server like this. I eventually did take the risk of going into the end, but it was just in hopes of traveling further since you can't sprint. And I had forgotten that these guys could apparently hit you as well, but I was hoping to find some area where the anarchy server hadn't taken over. Unfortunately though, I kept running into issues of losing connection, or Java overheaps, or something along those lines. And when I eventually got back, Dreamer, my friend, wasn't even on there anymore. So I decided it was time to go on to the next version. Eradica MC was the next server in line. Though I'd shut down according to the Discord server on March 28th, 2022, I did manage to find a world down link. And though this video is directed at abandoned still functioning Minecraft servers, I thought it would be interesting to explore just a little bit and relive what must have been the final moments in the Erratica Minecraft server. Though unfortunately I did find out that the world had actually been updated to 1.18.1 due to a user named 2Fexy announcing that in the Discord, which was definitely a little disappointing, but I thought it might be interesting to see if I could find anything noteworthy or mentionable in the server. Because the server size was pretty massive. From what it looked like, it seemed that the server had used to be a survival multiplayer server. And I found this interesting concept as this user was probably trying to dig a tunnel down into the ocean and ultimately ended up giving up. And then I eventually stumbled upon a staircase that seemed to go infinitely upwards uh, made of jungle slabs, which was pretty interesting. And if it didn't lead anywhere on the top, I was going to go down and see if it led anywhere down there instead. Which all we got to see <laughs> when we got to the top was that apparently midnight was here. I can only imagine how much time this staircase must have taken to make, this is crazy. 
but the staircase actually did lead to some pretty interesting looking builds. It was kind of reminiscent of a hermit craft shopping district, built in the mushroom biome with the grass changed to unsaid the mycelium. But there were definitely some neat little builds, a combination of almost castle-like structures built with modern aesthetics around it, which was really cool. Over here we had what I assumed was community gardens until somebody possibly broke it, and sugarcane farms as well. So maybe a community district farm where everybody could share from. And we even had this really pretty looking, I don't know how to call it, but maybe a greenhouse of sorts down over here. And I actually found what this town was called. It was called Shroomville, and their town goal was to provide shopping, create beautiful builds. That was their goals. Aside from this little shopping district, I couldn't find anything really that was within a reasonable distance of walking or exploring, and I could have used programs like MCA Selector, but I was more curious to keep, uh, to keep exploring, hello villagers, <laughs> and to keep exploring the earlier versions since we still hadn't really gotten past 1.6.5 just yet. But 1.7 was the next version, and what awaited us was a server called Crystal MC. I had no issues with logging on, or even finding information on the server, as everything you could hope for was listed on their site. Though the site was a little broken, I learned the server was founded in 2023 by a user Sebastian. From what I read, it seemed as though it was a mixture of SMP vanilla play and minigames. Logging in, I was the only player on the server, but I was greeted by a pretty lag-free, pretty impressively built uh, minigame area. There were multiple events you could join, one called Survival, one called Lifesteal, Shop Survival, and Events. When clicking into the Events tab, I unfortunately, nothing happened, and when I clicked into Shop Survival, I was already in the server. When I clicked into Lifesteal, the server would crash, but when I clicked into Survival, I was put into this server. Until I crashed. So that pretty much meant I was actually just limited to the lobby, the main lobby we were spawn in. Though as I would start to search around, I began to realize how just absolutely incredible these builds actually were in this server. And you could clearly tell that somebody had put a ton of time into these builds and this design. And it was really sad to see that there were no other players on except for me. But I guess that was kind of the point of this entire video, was to find servers that were eerily quiet. No players, no life, just you and the server itself for whatever strange reason, still running, despite the lack of players. Right as I said that, it said welcome TNJU to the server, but unfortunately nobody had actually joined. Ready to move on? It was time to go to the next version. The next server I chose, and there were a lot of servers to choose from, was called SJ Craft. From what I could learn by visiting the server site, this was based in Brazil, and it was a survival RPG server with mining and economy, events, MC, MMO, and more. I also found a Discord of only 13 members, which was pretty small, and I was hoping to learn more about the history of SJCraft, but everyone spoke in Portuguese. So when I managed to join in, I was greeted by this very small village that resembled a, an almost beginner kind of Minecraft experience is what I would compare it to. It was really nice and reminded me of the simple times, what it used to be like when I played Minecraft and didn't really have a plan, didn't have a video or anything, just good old Minecraft. And looking around you would find signs showing whose house was whose, which is Casa de Kaiki, so the house of Kaiki Tigrim in the future, I just, something like that. I don't really know. <laughs> We had a nice little horse stall, which I'm guessing horses, I can't remember, but I feel like they might have been added around this time. Some saddles and some horse armor, the old fashioned stuff in there. There was this beautiful house, this was a second story house with, ooh, with hopefully some diamond armor that um, I'm guessing this user wouldn't mind me wearing since they hadn't played on this server in probably a very long time. Oh, and wow, this guy was actually really, really geared up on food and whatnot, so, you know, I thought it would be okay to take just a couple stacks of food. They had this really big diving board, or actually I don't really know what it is, let's climb up and see what it is, but they had this massive ladder up here. I'm not sure it, if this was supposed to be a diving board, it's what it looked like from above, but maybe it was a diving board into what was supposed to become a pool. With my newfound armor, I was actually able to survive that fall. Whoa. This was like dog heaven over here. Yakuto, Kulto, Kaneto. There's a creeper following me, hold on. All right, creeper stay over there. So they had some dogs and then they also had some dogs over here, which was kind of sad. It was a bit of a graveyard, a little bit creepy, a little bit sad. Lots of flowers for all the dead dogs and nobody likes dead dogs. I, I, that made me really sad. So I decided to give some pork chops to the graves in respect to the doggos that had fought probably very, very bravely. That's what I'm guessing.
And I also decided to give these guys all just a good feeding since, you know, when was the last time they got fed some pork chops, you know? While exploring this base, I found a very organized chest place with a furnace in a big area, and I'd forgotten that you could actually use to block with your sword. I know that's a pretty popular mechanic, and I'm not sure how I'd forgotten that, but I was kind of cool. I had fun wagging my sword around. It looked like this house belonged to somebody named Daniel. Inside we had a jukebox full of actually some discs that you could play. That was kind of cool. These people who had the server were dog lovers, and I respect that. I thought that was great. Around this corner, uh, there was more organization, and there was actually some English. I don't know. I can actually read this stuff. Alchemy, ingredients, looks like food, a lot of supplies. My personal favorite chest was whatever. <laughs> Oh, and then up top, <laughs> we had a flashback. <laughs> this was um, obviously an attempt to go to the Aether. And probably a really sad torch right next to it signifying that it can't be done. That, <laughs> that both made me cry and, and made my day at the same time. This was what I wanted to check out. Over in this corner, it looked like an old-fashioned flint and steel area where you could light a portal and break it if you wanted to. And inside, I immediately noticed a couple options. There was this tunnel down one over this way, and there was this ladder that led all the way up, and I 100% wanted to climb up the ladder. Although, I didn't realize that this was like the ladder of all eternity, as it would take me a really, really long time to climb up. At the top, I found what I'm assuming was an old-fashioned gold farm, though it had been so long since I built seen one of these built in this version. Um, I had no idea what it looked like, but it looked like there was a lot of gold and a lot of golden swords in here. When coming up here, I found this chest with snowballs in it, and I realized this was a really interesting way to activate the farm. But this was, I'm guessing how easy it was, you would throw a snowball at this guy. These guys would start to come around and fall down into the trap doors and die. And then this was the area up there where you could AFK. A really old fashioned design, but it was very interesting to see it nonetheless. And I didn't want to keep any of the materials that I had on me, so I crafted this chest up just so I could dispense everything in here. But I did want to leave a sign, and all it said was, Yo Meister, Waz here, 2023. Nice server. Skipping all of 1.9 and 1.10 because I somehow couldn't find literally one server to work, I went to 1.11.2. For this French server called Mad in Craft, I found a site linked to it showing how the development of this must have been pretty in depth. According to the site, this server had opened on April 2013, over 10 years ago now. I found a live map showing the exploration of some players who had traveled tens of thousands of blocks. And I even found statistics of what players had played, how much time had been spent, and how many unique visitors this server had received. Hey, I'm on the list now. So when I would join the server, I was greeted by a ton of French, French that I couldn't understand. And I realized early on that I would not be able to understand anything of what was said over here. But looking around, the server that I joined, the city seemed to be pretty darn massive. Even if I couldn't enter into houses to actually see what was inside, it was at least, I, I, I could peer in the windows and look from outside, even though that was a little creepy. Looking around, I eventually found this Christmas tree, which made me kind of happy because Christmas is a good time of the year and there were little presents scattered around that were pretty cute to look at. Wow, I really can't do anything in this world, can I? I eventually found something that I couldn't resist, which kind of reminded me of the last server, and it looked to be another giant diving board. Oh wow, and it actually turned out to be a giant bouncy diving board. Yeah, after seeing this, I definitely had to do it, even if it takes hours to climb up. Aha, but when we had finally gotten to the top, we were at the diving board, I did notice that there was actually, oh my gosh, it's so happy, can't even see it. But as we jumped, I noticed there was a one block of water thing, and I kind of wanted to try to jump in. So let's aim for the slime, and ah, oh, we didn't get big enough bounce. I wanted to land over there. That was kind of fun though. Whoa, over here I found a valley of just skeleton horses, just meandering around, chilling, living their best life. I eventually found another massive castle, and it was at this point that I kind of realized it seems like the French t is telling me when I enter uh, certain people's bases or castles, and this one looked really, really cool, although kind of scattered and crazy on the interior. Early Minecrafters and their diving boards, man. I guess that was just a big thing back then. And I found a really cool set, a different range of leather armor that I could actually take. That was kind of nice. Wow, I eventually stumbled upon this crazy looking thing, which at first I thought was a battleship from the way it looked, but I really have no idea what it was. Super cool. 
but not being able to interact with anything kind of bummed me out and I wasn't able to get food or sprint around, which not being able to do that meant traveling the server would be a lot harder and I thought it would be cool to see this ice sculpture as the last thing before we moved on. Machine a Uroque Pierre, if I said that right. And it was actually a pretty cool ice statue that you could enter, go in, and... Well, I wasn't sure what this contraption was, but it looked like it must have been some sort of elevator or something. Maybe you guys could let me know down in the comments what this structure was supposed to be. My next server in 1.12.2 is called Dark's Corner. With the full on site, I found out the server was created by the YouTuber called Darko Mode, who creates loads of cursed Minecraft content. There was this cool section of the site where players could introduce themselves, and I found this one by Revenge Clan. Hi everyone, how y'all's day? <laughs> I, I just kind of liked it. But as far as details about the life of the server, I couldn't find an exact date when it started, but the last update had been December 1st of 2021. Oh. And I found a Discord where there was this art of an interesting duck creature. That was a bit of a rabbit hole. When joining the server, I was really excited because from the looks of things, it seemed like this was my actually first functional multiplayer kind of gaming server. With me being the only person on, I was scared but hopeful that maybe some of the games would work. And for the games, it looked like we had survival, creative mode, one block, forums, and the Discord to join as well. Uh, joining survival was the first step, and I guess this was the spawn area, and out here is maybe where we could find the exit way to the survival area. Wow, and when I went out, I was immediately greeted with the sight of a base that was actually pretty impressive. Coming out here, it looked like it was this, I don't even really know how to describe it, but a cool sphere with a water stream that goes up this middle. And there was this really cool temple from the top. This was just the spawn area over here, but it felt really cool being up the side. But wow, it seemed as though there had been an actual attempt at making legitimate bases, and this was actually a pretty crazy looking build. I, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, but some sort of ancient Japanese, almost architectured temple with a massive portal as well. This was a protected area I was in, and I guess that was something you were able to get. Wow, look at these buildings in survival. But around there was graffiti and a lot of 2B2T anarchy almost looking stuff from people who would come onto the server just to troll. And illegal looking sugarcane over there. How did they get, how did they get that tall? Uh, but since we had already seen so many survival server builds, I wanted to go to something different. Like one block and just check out to see what this looked like. And from the looks of things, it looked like it was just your every day, average, ordinary kind of um, one block experience, mining blocks, the one same block over and over and forming a base out of that. The last area to check out was the creative area, and I was really excited about this because I could only imagine if the builds looked like that in survival, what builds we might find in the creative area of things. The first area I found that was actually really, really neat was created by Glitch5567, and it was just a castle wall, um, nothing too crazy on the exterior, wrapping around with this amazing statue of what I could only imagine to be Gollum. Oh, I don't know what this is, I just built it. They had a cool little house, a cottage, medieval themed sort of build in the middle, and that was pretty to look at. Uh, over here, owned by Quirk Koo. I can only imagine was the beginnings of some crazy redstone, maybe roller coaster game. Lots of blocks around, but it was interesting nonetheless. This was a really cool one, created by Sager A90. Just a picture of Hero Brine and a little skeleton, a little Grim Reaper, sticking his scythe out of the out of the ground, ready to take some souls inside. It looked like it could have been a base, but I thought this was pretty creepy, pretty spooky, pretty fitting of Halloween. And we can't forget about Dilly 12's massive door. <laughs> this was just a maze of doors. Oh no, I can't look inside. Oh man. As soon as we entered Drew Kaz's place, uh, cursed music just started playing, and we were greeted by this terrifying looking ghost. Uh, my personal favorite structure, created by Old YGG, was this insanely strange looking monster blood baby face man. I, <laughs> I don't even really know what to make of that. And over here, created by Peanut Boy 3000, was Toys Free Toy Freddy's Pizzeria. When walking inside, you could see the terrifying Five Nights at Freddy's, and uh, it was pretty cool. Considering I just watched the movie pretty recently, um, I thought I found this to be a funny and, and happy little sight. But yeah, these plots just continued to go on and on, and there were so many unique and interesting builds to look at. I, I ended up finding myself doing this for quite a while before I realized how much footage I had. 
But I highly encourage you guys, if you ever want to find some abandoned old Minecraft servers, just to look around and explore a little, because it's, it's really unique. It's really interesting sometimes what you find. And to end this world, I thought we would look at WYK011 statue, because it was kind of creepy. And if done correctly, it would provide a really cool transition. Woo, cool transition. Skipping 1.13 because I couldn't find a version to work. If you guys really want me to, I will revisit these skip versions. But over on 1.14.4, I found a server with... Parkour. I'm actually really good at parkour, and I got so excited that I forgot to research this server. And I was also just kind of lazy. But I'm not gonna lie when I say that uh, my parkour skills are just on par, and I was uh, so excited to show you guys how how great at parkour I'm at. Uh, as you as you could see, um, yeah. Oh 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 oh. There we go. See, as you guys can see, I'm I'm really good. Well, I promise you that um, this is actually one of the hardest parkour courses in the world. Obviously, uh, only really cool people can beat this. Whoever created this parkour is a madman. Uh, but the server was actually pretty interesting. When you would spawn, you would get a lot of people just staring at you all the time, I felt like. Uh, especially in this prison. I mean, you would spawn in and you got Dream looking at you, which is pretty cool. And then you got this really buff dude looking at you and really just everybody kind of looking at you all the time. Um, it made me feel a little uncomfortable. And so I ran over here to the D rank room where I get the letter D and um, I guess this was like kind of an escape shop thing. I don't know, we had the cell loot villager who would sell us stuff if we mined for him. So I started mining. Wow, and this was really broken. $108 for just three of these? Like, uh, heck yeah, I had $343. <laughs> Though I honestly had no idea what that meant or where I could buy stuff. Oh wait, enchantments and shop. But I decided, you know what, I kind of want to get a little bit richer, just because I, I want to imagine this money being my mo actual money and actually being rich. Oh, great. Whoever invented this game must have known how addicting this was. Oh, and you can actually sell string too. That's kind of nice. Oh, wow. Just watching that cash roll in. That was great. <laughs> the last thing to explore uh, in this server, it seemed, was a Plex Skybar. And you could actually walk into these things. Which I thought that was kind of a cool transition effect for traveling and and here we got uh, we got greeted by the living embodiment of spotify uh you could walk around and there was this cool little bar area a little sky lounge if you were if you were cool enough you could enter but obviously i, I wasn't a b rank so um, i was a d rank and, you know I, I was i guess i was just a loser meant to be in this box where why don't you just listen and play normal wow disappointment uh full of shame um i decided to walk into this room uh, which which turned out to be a bathroom with no with an open window so that people could look in and, and see how shameful I was. Uh, I, the shame was real, man. You are not high enough rank to enter this area, man. Only the wealthy A A people go in there. I feel ranked. Feeling sad. I I thought I would visit parkour and, and maybe try out this course because I hadn't tried it just yet. So maybe maybe just maybe I'd be so much better at it. And not triggered at all, I moved on to a 1.15 German server. This server was called Skysucht, which I found to mean sky addiction. Interesting. Skysucht. 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 <laughs> the description of the server was the best I've ever found. It was Dust is Skysucht ein City Build Netzwerk, which means this is Skyzot's uh, city build network. <laughs> I actually did find a bit of a discord, but since it was German, I couldn't make anything out except for memes. And oh man, were these memes fire. Look at this, package fell into ocean. The four horsemen of Pokemon ruined by the internet. Gentlemen, it's with great pleasure to inform you that this curvy crop does indeed fit on anything. <laughs> So joining the server was actually pretty cool. Uh, I got this really awesome boost pad in my hand that could boost me around and make me jump pretty high. And the builds in here were actually pretty crazy for all the jokes and gills aside, you know. It was actually a really, really cool looking server. I mean, I can only imagine how long this took to build. There is this weird popping thing that when I clicked it, the color in my hand would change. 
and I'd get a cool fog effect for a second, but I wasn't really sure what this did for me. But then I found a navigator where you could go to an Among Us place, uh, whatever this place was, went off the screen so I can tell. There were bed wars and there was the spawn, and so I wanted to go check out Among Us. When we went to Among Us, we got to see this little dude dancing and some guy saying that you're sus, which, looking at his face, he did look pretty sus. There was no face. That's kind of sus. Walking around, I wasn't 100% sure what all this was. I mean, there were dudes fighting on crafting tables, and this poor guy looked like he was about to be yeeted to death. That's kind of sad. And there was this exhibit of a very hairy tarantula, um, or whatever this was. I wasn't really sure what to make of that. Uh, but we can't forget about build training, and, and that little panda man over there dancing his heart out. Beautiful. Clicking on the mysterious crafting table ended up taking us to a place, I'm guessing, where you could build because there's a portal that said city build, one right over here. And I was right. It looked like there were lots of plots with lots of land, and some of these builds were really extensive and really cool. Look at that leaning tower over there. A modern leaning tower of pizza. I said pizza, but I meant pizza. I and mean, some of the builders on this server were actually ridiculously talented. I mean, looking at this mansion built on this cliffside, I could only imagine how long this build had taken to make. Of course, its next door neighbor was this flattering piece of endstone parkour where you could parkour your endstone heart out. Lovely. We had a terrifying dragon egg. Um, I guess this was with a spider actually that we just saw a second ago. It looked like it's maybe its mother. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and then we had a massive spooky looking roller coaster, and I wanted to ride. Oh no, oh wait, oh gosh. I wanted to ride the roller coaster, but I couldn't find a minecart to ride down with, and so I had to do the roller coaster just by walking on it. It wasn't as fun, but at least I didn't die in the process of going down. It looked like there were a cool dragon with the, the player riding the dragon through this interesting looking end area. It was interesting nonetheless and made me appreciate uh, life as I died in this lava pool. From there, I wanted to check out the Bedwars area as well to see what this was like and we actually got teleported back to our friend, which upon right clicking on him, we actually got teleported to an area that looked like it used to be a functional Bedwars server. But I couldn't activate it and with a lack of players around on the server, I decided it was time to actually probably move on to the next one, because in real life, I was starting to get kind of tired. Tired of making this video, tired of staying up till 1.06am in the morning recording this, and I guess just tired of Minecraft servers. 1.16.4 was my next server, and I guess I really like anarchy servers. I unfortunately couldn't find much about this server, except it launched on January 1st, 2021. I did find a very vague site linked to the server with the same logo as the server icon, but all it was was a donations page. Immediately logging on, I could tell that, that the server was going to be pretty interesting because of, well, Ute. I, I was starting to get very tired at this point in this recording. But from the looks of it, there was a lot of stuff to read, and not a lot of time. So I decided to walk through this portal into a red box crystal PvP arena. And then. I changed my mind immediately and jumped here to go to the Badlands, which, ooh, that was a pretty big jump. Upon teleporting, I apparently joined in an area called Halloween, Halloween Town, something like that, where there were some creepy guys walking around, villagers with Among Us, very sus looking faces. But not wanting to deal with the unfortunate rain, I immediately decided to come back here and teleport to the factory, where apparently I could do a little bit of exploring of some builds with a really, really big factory. I was super curious to see what would be on inside. Going up these staircases was kind of a maze on the inside. Random chest, random numbers, blocks, um, creepy pictures of skeleton people. Wow, this was actually kind of spooky. This was my first sign of spookiness, and I really enjoyed that, um, because I said that some of the servers might be spooky. Oh, look at that, a horror picture right there. Yeah, I was digging the vibes of Halloween Town, especially considering I was recording this video you know, at midnight on Halloween. Around the back of the factory, we had a bit of a radioactive leak as some ooze was spilling out, but no harm, no foul. Nobody was in the vicinity except me because the server was unfortunately very lonely, much like the rest of the ones we had been on already. There was a vending machine, but when you click the button, you just got a trap door to flick for you. And that was really it. I kind of want my money back that I didn't pay. 
And then inside this doorway, I found more paintings, more areas of dining, chilling around, eating some very nice old cucumbers. Overall, I really liked the feel of the factory, and it was refreshing. It was a refreshing pace being at nighttime, exploring a server, rather than being in the daytime, having these little islands that you could just barely digest instead of a whole server to consume. The server talked to me while I was lonely, asking, where's Notch when you need him? And I even felt really nice because of that. That was a comforting thing to have the server talking to me. But being unable to explore the Halloween town because of the rain, I decided it was time to jump off this plank and fall into the unknown. Oh, I start floating. <laughs> After this, I was stuck in a permanent uh, kind of a loop of floating and I decided it was actually time to, to explore the final server. Oh my gosh, it's Cowtopia. With research being the last thing that was on my mind, I just wanted to see some cows. Wait, what? Cows? Cowtopia? Are you down there? What the heck, man? You're not a Cowtopia, man. You're a pumpkin man with a zombie head. Ah! Hoping to find the cows, I decided to accept my fate and hope that I would meet them in cow heaven. But nothing. All I got was this number 20. Some weird snow, some weird rain. After I had not seen cows and was really disappointed, I left the server. I found Cowtopia's site, only to see, still, no cows. Hoping to find cows, I went to the site's server shop and found some cows that hadn't really been set up to be purchased, so I couldn't buy any cows. Being really disheartened, I clicked on the site's AFK page and finally, a cow with a heart. How beautiful. But then, I clicked onto a free ranks tab and I, I'm at a loss for words, in all honesty. I needed redemption and quickly. So I found the discord for the server, found an images tab and scrolled as quickly as I could to the beginning, hoping with all hope that there'd be a cow picture. All I got was cats. And after this, with no good pictures of cows, I was too disappointed to continue this video. And I also wanted to release this video on Halloween, but looking at my clock as I wrote this script, it was already 12.36, excuse me, 2.01 in the morning. So with that said, uh, I guess goodbye. Enjoy life, enjoy Minecraft. Um, I might make another one of these, I don't know, we'll see. And uh, happy Halloween, ciao. Thank you.